So happy first day of class to anybody attending any public schools slash colleges slash universities here in the United States. Uh, for my international viewers, I'm not sure when your first day of class starts, but if it does, if it does so happen to fall in this time, then happy first day of class. So I think to start off the semester with just right, I thought we actually tackle on some improper integral, a popular one in fact, that we have that the cosine of x divided by x squared plus 1 dx from negative infinity to positive infinity. This being popular that you can actually search this integral itself and you're going to get tons of solutions, mainly if you solve things with the traditional way that you actually apply complex analysis. And well, I'm sure that if you've seen this integral, you already know the answer by then just from looking up already. But Today's video is a twist. We are actually not going to be solving this integral using complex analysis. Instead, we're actually going to solve things to a little bit different of a turn. So if you're wondering how we would use complex analysis to solve this, well, you can actually apply using Euler's formula, replace the cosine of x with the exponential e to the power i times x. Take that real part to get this. As you take the limit, since we have negative infinity and infinity, then apply with contour integration and um, using residue theorem to solve all this out. But what we'll be using here in this time for this twist is that there's, you're going to see that we're actually going to use some Laplace transform. We're still going to be doing some integration, like no, no doubt about that. But we're also going to be applying a little bit of algebra, specifically using some partial fraction decompositions along the lines to solve for a piece of each of those coefficients that you're going to see along the way in these videos. So mainly those two key things that, or key moments you want to see that you're about to uh, witness ahead of time. But, um, this is where the fun starts. So, um, happy first day of class and let's actually start the semester off right. So if we take a look at our integrand cosine of x divided by x squared plus 1, so I'll call it f of x specifically, notice that the function is actually an even function if you were to plug negative x, everything is even on the top and on the bottom. So what's nice is that by um, rewriting this integral a little differently, so I have that negative infinity to positive infinity of our same integrand, I could actually write that as the double of the positive um, real part. So it's two men multiply from zero to infinity of our same integrand. So let's actually define a function. I'll call this, we'll call this capital I of T. I'm gonna call, then that means it's the same integral, but our input for cosine is gonna be X times T and then X divided by X squared plus one DX. Okay. So we have to figure out what to do from here. So why don't we actually take the Laplace transform of our I of t function. So by using that definition of the Laplace transform that says that uh, the Laplace transform of I of t is that we have the improper, the improper integral from zero to infinity of our function I of t, then we multiply by e to the negative s times t. Depending on some definition, how you look at it, s is a form of frequency. When you, This is basically you learn about Laplace transforms in um, a standard introductory differential equations. So if I substitute this back in for back into here, so i have taken the Laplace transform of this. So now I'll instead now have the double integral of our same bound, so zero to infinity and also zero to infinity of cosine of x times t divided by x squared plus one, then multiplied by e to the negative st, then um, dx, then dt. And so from here, now with the whole, um, what we're gonna do from here is we're actually going to do a little bit of order of integration, um, change the order of integration. That means I'm actually gonna flip my differentials. So usually that depends on how your function is that it has to be in the form of a continuous function for two values at f of x plus x, y. So from here, if I just change this up, then I'm basically writing the same. I'm basically writing the same thing again, except I'm just changing our differential such that it's dt and then dx afterwards. And so from here, there's just by separating the integrals out. So I have that we have zero to infinity. I'll put this with um, associated with the x and then everything associated with um, t on its own. So x squared plus one, then dx, and then multiply with zero. Or actually, I'll I'll put the dx at the end, actually. So I'll have zero, then infinity. Then afterwards, we'll have that cosine of xt, then e to the negative st, then dt, and then dx. So as you notice from over here, we're looking at this integral specifically, that this is actually where I, this is by definition, the Laplace transform of cosine of x dt. So I actually just replaced that for, um, with the Laplace symbol. So in other words, we have the new integral. So the integral from zero to infinity of one divided by x squared plus one multiply with the Laplace transform of cosine of x dt and then dx, or rather no, d, no, no dt instead. It's just, we just left with a single differential dx on its own. 
this is actually very simple to calculate. Well, in other words, you're basically taking the, um, inter you're actually solving for the integral of this integrand over here. But usually when you're solving things, it's simple from there. But you just want to remember from your table of Laplace transforms from there, or you want to verify this yourself, however you want to look at things. But I'm just skip, I'm basically saying we're just going to skip the step four from here. That now so far we'll have is one divided by x squared plus one. Then the Laplace transform of the cosine x dt for some standard t is that we'll have that this is going to be multiplied with s divided by s squared plus x squared and then dx. Now let's actually um, simplify things up a little further that now I can factor out the s as it does not depend on our integral over here. So it's s multiplied with 0 to infinity of so let me first write the denominator x squared plus 1 and then s squared plus x squared and then the numerator with 1 and then multiply with dx. So as you can see, it's mentioned that we actually have some partial fraction decomposition that we're actually going to need to figure out from here, as you can tell. So let's actually work on that step. So now, next step is, so we're looking at our integrand over here. So x squared, we'll worry about the integration at the end once we figure out the coefficients, plus x squared. Then we use partial fraction decomposition to find our coefficients. We both had quadratic functions on both the top, on um, both of the denominator over here. So we actually have to choose the, how we want to find it. So on the numerator, it has to be in the form of a linear function when you subtract a degree for each time. So x plus b, then divided by x squared plus one. Add this with cx plus d, and then divided by x squared plus s squared. It doesn't matter how you write it, it's both an addition. So if I actually were to do some cross multiplication, and expand this out, so now I'll have ax cubed plus ax s squared. Add this with bx squared plus bs squared. Add this with cx cubed plus cx. Add this with dx squared plus d, and then set this equal to one. Okay, that sounds like a lot to intake over here, but that's fine. We can actually set everything of the parts equal to each other by converting this into a uh, systems of equations. So let's solve that out. So if I set the pieces equal to each other, so we have to convert everything so that we set the coefficients on the left-hand side equal to the coefficients on the right-hand side. So first off, we have the ones for with degree three, the cubic functions, nothing on the right-hand side. So we can set that equal to zero. So I have that we see that we have an A and a C. So that means I have a plus c, let's set that equal to zero. A second part is everything associated with the x squared. So I have a b and a d, so b plus d equals zero. Another one is we have just x on its own. So I have ax, as squared over here, and then plus c. So let's put that as squared then plus c. Nothing for the right hand side, so that's set to equal to zero. And then our last one is just our constant so that means I have a b s squared and then plus d. And what do you have? We have a one, so we can set that equal to that. Plus d equals one. And then we just solve our coefficients there, which is actually straightforward to see that I can actually just set a equals negative c. And then for the other one, b plus d equals zero. So I'll set b equals negative d. And if I actually just plug this back in for um, a is equal to negative c here. So I have a s squared minus a equals zero. So Therefore, we can see that a is equal to zero, and um, that also hence implies c is equal to zero. Then going back to over here, so b s squared plus d, we said these um, b is equal to negative d, so put that back in. So b s squared minus b equals zero. Solve that out. Well, rather equal to one. My mistake because we have a constant, so plus one, and so therefore we see that b is equal to one divided by s squared minus one, then put that back in, then we get our negative d, or rather the d value. So d is equal to negative one, then divided by s squared minus one. So therefore we found our four coefficients and it makes things a little easier since two of our coefficients are just equal zero. So this is our four that we have that's boxed into purple. So now we can actually just substitute this back in four over here. So that means now over here, that means one divided by x squared plus one, then times x squared plus s squared. Then that means I have that this is equal to one divided by s squared minus one and all that divided by x squared plus one. 
The next is a subtraction since this is a minus. So I have one then divided by s squared minus one then divided by x squared plus s squared. Okay, and so now that makes things a little bit easier. So I'll put this back in for over here. So the new, our new integral rather. So I have s then multiply with. So let me actually take things one step at a further since putting this back in and then let's notice that I can substitute the s the denominator s squared minus one outside of that so that'll just become s divided by s squared minus one then we multiply with the integral over here for zero to infinity um, now this is going to be one divided by x squared plus one and then subtract one divided by x squared plus s squared then dx and then what's nice is that the antiderivatives are very straightforward to um, see here that we have the antiderivatives over here straightforward to see that we have s divided by s squared minus one. And so this is just arctan, or let me simplify this out just, well, not really simplify, let me just write it another way and say inverse tangent of x. This is from zero to infinity and then subtract. So this is one divided by s and then multiply with arctangent of x divided by s from zero to infinity. And so therefore simply that if you just plug infinity over here, so infinity is gonna approach pi over two. This is also going to approach pi over two. So that means I'm gonna have s square, s divided by s square minus one, multiply with pi divided by two, subtract one over s multiply with pi squared divided, or pi divided by two. And so to continue forward from here, if I just do the distribution, then I have that now I'm gonna have pi times s and then divided by two times s squared minus one, then subtract pi divided by two times s squared minus, or rather, because I have the s's that cancel, so, well, actually I was right, because the s cancels, so it's two, then times s squared, subtract one. And so though so far that's actually, we said that that's actually taking the Laplace transform of i t over here, so let's actually distinguish that just as a reference. And so now that's straightforward that what I can do is let's actually take the inverse Laplace transform up here. So at least we're going back to where we started. So if I take the inverse Laplace transform, so that means I'm back to I at T. That's the um, function that we want to evaluate uh, first of all. So that means I have I T and then pi divided by two multiplied with the inverse transform, the inverse Laplace of S divided by S squared minus one then subtract the inverse Laplace of one divided by S squared minus one. And so using, you know, um, your tables, of course, that that's actually just gonna yield us pi divided by two, multiply with the hyperbolic cosecant of T, then subtract the hyperbol or hyperbolic sine of T. Then we can still continue forward by actually using the, ex the complex exponential definition for these two hyperbolic functions. So let's actually continue forward from there. So we know that pi over two, and then now the definition of the hyperbolic cosine is written as e to the positive t, add this with e to the negative t divided by two, subtract for the definition for an hyperbolic sine, which is just e to the t, then subtract e to the negative t divided by two. Nicely done that this has a common denominator, so we just subtract the numerators, so the e to the positive t will cancel, and so we're just left with pi divided by two multiplied with e to the negative t. And so what's left is that we set that i t is equal to, so since I erased this, let's actually uh, rewrite this again, say that i t is equal to the, um, the integral from cosine of x t, then divided by x squared plus one dx. Now, if I just plug i, if I just plug t is equal to one, so that's the point putting this back in, that's actually gonna give us what we wanted from the beginning, it's just double that. So putting this back in, so I have the integral from zero to infinity, cosine of x, and then divided by x squared plus one dx. So plug this back in, so I have pi divided by two, then times e to the negative one, or pi, divided by two e. And so lastly, what's left is that this integral, in other words, negative infinity to infinity cosine of x, x squared plus one dx, same thing as two times double of this, which was what we wanted to solve for, then cosine of x divided by x squared plus one dx. Simply, it's just indeed just equal to two times pi divided by 2e, which is indeed just equal to pi divided by e, which indeed, as you already can guess before watching this video, that this is indeed the final answer to this improper 
this popular improper integral just like that. So yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed your first day of class. Uh, make sure you study hard, make this, you know, make the best out of your college while you can. And um, so yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.